What's up friends, Dan here, and today I wanna to take a look at installing Java 14 on Windows 10. And we'll do it right after this. If you're on Mac OS, Linux, or running Bash on Windows, I usually suggest SDK Man for installing Java because it's great at managing multiple versions of Java. If you're new to Java development and want to just learn how to install Java so that you can begin your programming journey, you are in the right place. In this tutorial, I'm going to explain the different editions of Java, how to download it from multiple vendors, and how to install Java 14 on Windows 10. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is check to see if Java is installed or not. So we can do this a couple different ways. You can hit the Windows key in R to get the run dialog, you can type in CMD and hit enter, and that'll bring up a command prompt. Another way is just to search down here for CMD. Command prompt is going to come up. You can select it or just hit enter and the command prompt will come up. So we're gonna go ahead and check to see if we have Java. And the way that we can do that is we can type Java space dash version. And it's either going to come up with a version number like 1.8 or 11 or 14, or it's going to come back and look like this. And this is going to tell us that Java is not recognized. So two things are happening here. One, it's either installed and it's just not configured properly, or two, we just don't have it installed. So something else might happen. You, you might have it come back and say that you do have a version of Java installed, but we want to do one more check here. If you do have a version installed, just do me one more check and say Java, spe uh, Java C space dash version. And that stands for the Java compiler. As we're going to look at in a second here, there are two versions of Java. One, the Java version, which you need to uh, have installed on your computer to run Java applications, which is the Java SE or standard edition. And then there is the version that you need installed on your computer to build Java applications. And that is the Java JDK or Java Development Kit. All right, so the first thing that I'm going to do is come over to Google and I'm going to actually minimize this now. And the first thing you might do is do a search for download Java. And so when we do that, the first item that comes up here or the first result is from java.com and it says download free Java. So there's a big bright button here that says Java download. And remember I told you before that there are two versions. And this is actually the version that you need to be able to run your Java applications. This is what anybody who's not developing software would need on their computer if they needed to run a computer that was written uh, specifically in Java for, say, a specific platform. But what again, what we want is something called the Java JDK. Now, this is version 8 right here, and you can see there is a license update from Oracle. So the Oracle Java license has changed for releases starting in 2019. Basically, what it comes down to is any version past this version in 8, um, if you want to develop software uh, locally on your machine, it is free to use. You don't have to stop using it there. If you go ahead and take that application and you want to put it somewhere on a server, then you will have to pay a license fee to Oracle. Now, I don't want you to let this discourage you from getting into Java because there are free versions, which we'll look at the Adopt Open JDK, which has free binaries. But today we're gonna to install the Oracle JDK and it's, again, free to use on your local machine. Do not let any of this kind of um, stop you from getting started. If you do have questions about licensing, uh, please go ahead and leave them below. So now that you know the difference, let's go ahead and refine our search. So let's say we want to download the Java JDK. So now the first item or first result that comes up is the Java SE Standard Edition downloads page on Oracle. And so here you'll find a bunch of documentation, installation instructions, release notes, a whole bunch of really great stuff that you can get into. And then over here on the right is the Oracle JDK. So we can go into JDK download. Again, this is version 14. If you needed a specific one, you can come down and grab that. But we're gonna download the JDK 14 today. 
Now again, here's that big important Oracle JDK license update that we talked about earlier. So before we download this, I just wanted to mention uh, another option here. So if you go ahead and search for Adopt Open JDK, you will see Adopt Open JDK.net. You can come here and choose a version. So we could grab the latest version like 14. Uh, you can leave the JVM just on the hotspot. And you can go ahead and download this. And to your eye, as you start developing software, nothing is going to change. This is a version that you could develop software in locally and then put on a server somewhere and you don't have to pay a license fee. Again, there are a lot of questions around these license fees, but just know that there are options out there. You don't need to pay for Java, uh, pay for all versions of Java to go ahead and, and use them in the public. Again, we're going to use Java from Oracle today. It's the one most people are used to. And we aren't doing anything. We're just going to install it. And we're just developing software locally. So I'm going to come down here. And there's all these different uh, versions or different um, operating systems. So we have our Linux. We have Mac OS. And we have Windows 64-bit uh, installer. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the download button. Yes, Oracle, we have extensively researched this and we are going to agree to your terms um, on your license updates before we go and download this. So that's gonna go ahead and download. It's gonna take about a minute. I'm gonna go ahead and pause and we'll rejoin you when that's done downloading. All right, so our download has finished. I'm going to go ahead and click on that to run the installer. So I'm going to go ahead and click Next. The first thing you want to pay attention to is where is it getting installed at. For me, it's in C, Program Files, Java, JDK 14. I'm fine with that. So I'm going to click Next. It's going to get installed. And what it will come back to is basically you have some next steps, which can go through some of the documentation. Um, so if you get a chance, go ahead and read through that. But I'm going to hit Close. And at this point, it is installed. Um, a lot of times when you are installing programs like this that you need to run from the command prompt, you'll want to close the command prompt and go ahead and reopen it. So now if we go ahead and type java space dash version, we're still going to get this problem. But it's not a problem. Uh, it's just uh, how things work here. And let's talk about that. So remember when we talked about where we were going to install it? If I go to C, Program Files, Java, and JDK 14, you see I have a bunch of folders here, one of which is bin. If we go down, we can see that we have a program called Java, and we have one called Java C. So these are the programs that I'm trying to run from the command prompt here. So when I type in Java, Windows is telling us that, hey, I don't know exactly where this Java program is. And to be frank, I'm not going to search the entire file system because that's going to take me too long. So what you want to do is you want to copy this path here, and we want a way to tell uh, our tell Windows that, hey, when you look for something called Java, here's a folder that you can look in. And so the way that we're going to do that is come down here and search, and we're going to say environment variables. We're going to go ahead and click on that. Click on environment variables. And down here in system variables, we're going to type in a new one. We're going to call this Java underscore home. We're going to paste that path in there, and we're going to take the slash bin off. And this is going to create us a variable called Java Home that we're going to now use in our path. So there's this path here. If you go ahead and edit that, there's a bunch of things on the path. And again, these are locations that Windows will go ahead and search for applications. In. So we want to add a new one here. And we want to use that Java home variable we just created. So we're going to use a percent sign and say Java underscore home. And then we're going to do slash bin because Java is in the bin folder. It's not in the root of that folder. And you need to be very specific on where you want to search. So we're going to hit OK here. We're going to hit OK. Hit OK again. Again, we want to close down the command prompt. And we'll go ahead and reopen it. Now if we type in Java space version, we can see that we are running version 14. You also get a build number uh, because there are incremental builds of different versions of Java. So when a fix comes in, you'll see a new build 
uh, for that particular uh, version. And you can see that we're running 64-bit. So now we do have Java installed, but do we have the tools that we need to build Java? So remember that other check we can run is Java C, which is the Java compiler. And that's what allows us to compile our Java application. So we can say Java C space dash version, and we can see that we are running version 14 of the Java compiler. So now we have both the program that we need to run Java applications, and we have the program that we need to compile our Java applications. So, so far, everything looks really good, but I want to do one more thing. So if we go ahead and clear this, if you're running any version past Java 9 or above, you get this really great program with it called JShell. And JShell is a REPL, which stands for Read, Evaluate, Print, Loop. And if you've come from any other language before, uh, languages like Python have this available. And it's a really great way to get introduced to a language. So now that you have Java installed, you don't need to go download some IDE, understand how to configure that, uh, maybe use a text editor. Again, set all of this up and go through the headaches of that stuff. You just want to jump in and start writing some Java code right now. You can. And the way that we can do that is we can go ahead and type jshell. That's going to put us into a new prompt. And here we can start writing Java code. Now again, if you're brand new to programming, uh, don't worry about this. I'm just going to run through a, a few simple commands. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a new variable called x, which is of type integer. So it's an integer. And we're going to assign a value of 10 to it. So jshell comes back and says x is now equal to 10. I'm going to create a new variable called y, and I'm going to assign the value of 20. So now you can see uh, x, and x is 10, y is 20. I'm going to create one more variable, and I'm going to call this total, I'm going to spell it right, and I'm going to make this equal to x plus y. And now you can see that total is equal to 30. So JShell does a bunch of things, and it also brings in a lot of the standard library for you, so you don't need to, what we call, import a specific package or class. So we can come in here and use something called system.out.println, and this will allow us to just print out something to the standard out. So we can say the total is, and then we can go ahead and concatenate our total on here. So if we hit that, it now says the total is 30. So again, jshell, awesome. Go ahead and read up a little bit more on jshell. There's a bunch of different commands. If you'd like to see a, a little bit more of an in-depth tutorial on using jshell as a new a programmer in the Java space, let me know. I'd be happy to go through something like that as well. So with that, question of the day, what version of Java are you using? 8, 9, 14? If you're not on the latest, what are you waiting for? Is anything holding you back? If you found value in this video, please go ahead and leave me a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and as always, friends, happy coding.